Good evening. Thank you for tuning in to Faux News. Tonight, we go to our special commentator, Ben Fleck, for a report on a situation in the Pacific. Ben? Today, ladies and gentlemen, I'm talking to you about an important subject. But first, I have a story to preface this with. The time? March 1st, 1954. The place is Bikini Atoll, which is located in the Marshall Islands. An atoll, for uneducated Democrat viewers, are ring-shaped islands made of coral. Akichu Komowama was a chief radio vessel of this very boat. He was out there fishing like any other normal day until his life changed forever with a blinding flash of light and immense heat. On that faithful day, Akichi happened to be at the wrong place at the wrong time. He was within range of Project Bravo, the largest nuclear weapon ever detonated by your glorious saviors in communist Washington, D.C. He died six months later due to his exposure to the bomb. Those communists in Washington, D.C. are to blame for his death. The Marshall Islands are only five big, and there's 29 of these so-called atolls. They have a mass of 121 square kilometers, if you use that weird measurement, which is the equivalent of Washington, D.C. Now, this is a conspiracy right here. We test the largest nuke known to man on a piece of land that's the same size as our nation's capital. And right now, we have a man up there, a communist who hates America and is in control of that said nuke. Now, back on to these poor people that are victims of our saviors. The nuclear wasteland in the Marshall Islands is located halfway between Hawaii and Australia. Over 840 of these poor souls have died to careless testing, and over a thousand more already have one foot in the grave. These Marshall Islands, they're a sick friend. We have Libya, we help. Iraq, we invade. Japan, we send help. Okay, Obama, how about you actually send help to someone who needs it and who's dying because of us? Someone like the Marshall Islands. They petition for more money. You ignore it. Stop ignoring their cries for help, okay? We cannot pretend to do this anymore. I know you are a Democrat, okay? Demo, as in demolition. You are destroying our ways of life. Okay, is destroying our country not bad enough for you? You have to destroy other countries as well? No, this is not going to last. I am not going to stand for this. This, Mr. President, is the last straw. And this is where it's going to end. Someone get Ben a glass of water. It's all right, Ben. It's going to be okay. We got to get him. All right, you guys. You son of a biscuit-eating bulldog. What the French toast? Did you think I wouldn't find out about your little doo-doo head cootie queen? Who are you calling a cootie queen, you lint liquor? Pickle you, kumquat! You're overreacting. No, Bill, overreacting was when I put your convertible into a wood chipper. Stinky McStink face! Fabulous! New Orbit Raspberry Mint cleans another dirty mouth. For a good clean feeling, no matter what. Well, thank you for staying with us at Faux News. We apologize for the technical difficulties there. We go now live to Wayne in the Marshall Islands for a special report. Wayne? Bikini Atoll is a test site for over 60 nuclear weapons. There's four test sites for the U.S. in the Pacific after World War II, but Bikini Atoll was the hardest hit. This small landmass was hit with the equivalent of over 69,000 tons of dynamite. Unlike dynamite, however, the effects of a nuclear explosion don't stop with the explosion. Although precautions were taken to stop the fallout from reaching the islands, accidents happen, and the fallout has had long-lasting effects on the population of the surrounding areas. All this testing stemmed from a relationship that was forged between the U.S. and the Marshall Islands during World War II. Before World War II, the Marshall Islands were under Japanese control. In the beginning of the war, Marshall Islands were host to a Japanese fleet that was tasked with defending the islands. In 1944, the U U.S. forces took over and inhabited the island. After World War II, the U.S. signed the Trust and Treaty of the Pacific Islands. 
1986, the U.S. paid $150 million in a compensation package, but Bikini is still uninhabitable, while other test sites are being cleaned up. Bikini is <coughs> petitioning for more money. According to a Bikini Atoll representative, the U.S. Congress has spent over $12 billion on the Hanford site, another decommissioned nuclear program. He says they ought to be over sticker shock by now. Even though the Marshall Islands have been through these trials, it is still a great place to visit. The location and size of it makes it perfect for anybody looking for a tropical getaway. It's located halfway between Australia and Hawaii, and the total land mass is about the equivalent of Milan in Italy. The air temperature stays in the low 80s, as does the water temperature, making it perfect for anybody looking to go for a swim. As Jonathan Weiskall, the U.S. attorney that represents the Marshall Islands in Washington, put it, the American public should think of this as part of the cost and legacy of the Cold War. The Marshall Islands are the United States' dirty little secret. While we give foreign aid and help people the world over, we overlook the country that we ourselves crippled. Weiskall continues saying, the test helped the United States win the Cold War with the Russians, but now it's time to clean up and let these people go home. The United States needs to help clear the mess that is created in the Marshall Islands and help return these people to their normal lives. Thank you for that report, Wayne. Riveting stuff. Hopefully someone, somewhere, will do something. I will. Not you, Ben. Don't worry about it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's all the time we have for tonight on Special Report with Chris O'Reilly. I'm Chris O'Reilly. On behalf of Wayne and Ben and myself, thank you for tuning in. Have a good evening.